Well, good morning, everyone. It is always a very special pleasure to welcome back to the Media Center our five-time Green Jacket winner, Mr. Tiger Woods. Tiger, thank you for being with us today. Thanks Thank for spending uh, a few minutes. It's been five years ago, hard to believe, <laughs> that you won your fifth Green Jacket. Mm -hmm. You started Thursday, if you remember, that first round outside the top 10. Correct. And went on to win in dramatic fashion. It is rare for a player outside the top 10 after Thursday to win. You did it in 2019. Right. In the last 20 years, it's still only been done one other time. And that was 2005, <laughs> and that was you. Right. <laughs> what a testament. You're trying to tell me I need to start outside the top 10. <laughs> what a testament to your indomitable will over your, your career and your ability yeah. to make changes and adaptions to your practice, to your therapy, yeah. according to your, your, your body needs. Mm -hmm. And you executed that to perfection in 2019. In 2021, there was that horrific accident that mm -hmm. did serious damage to, to your leg. Could you share with us? What adaptions to your healing, your rehab, your practice, your preparations uh, that you have done mm -hmm. that puts you in the best position to win your sixth green jacket? Well, I have an amazing, amazing medical staff that has really helped me um, get through this. Um, Kobe has really been there through thick and thin to help me get into this position. And it's, uh, it's a daily adaption. Uh, we work at it each and every day, um, whether it's uh, trying to loosen me up or strengthen me or it's just recovery. Uh, my, my practice sessions certainly aren't what they used to be. I used to, you know, live on the range or live on a short game facility and just be out there all day. Uh, that's no longer the case. And so I just have to be more focused on when I do get a chance to go out there and practice and uh, really grind out and make every shot count um, because I just really don't have the ball count in me anymore. So uh, those adaptations have... Um, you know, hopefully I've made them for this week. I've got a chance to go out there on Sunday, take a look at the front nine. I played yesterday with Will on the back nine and uh, came out today and played the front nine again with uh, JT and Fred. So uh, this golf course is, when we came up here, when we, when we came up here last weekend, uh, it was in perfect shape and it's only gotten better, which is uh, hard to believe, but it, it has. And, and hopefully we will... Uh, you know, get the weather cooperate a little bit with us uh, come Thursday. Taylor, let's open the questions with Taylor. And if you would, please lean into the microphone to state your question. Taylor? Tiger, given those physical challenges that you I? just described, yes. why is it so important for you to keep playing in this tournament? Well, it, this term has meant so much to me in my life and my, my family. Um, I've, I think I've been playing here for tw tw 29 years now. And it has, uh, it was the ultimate to be able to stay in the, the crow's nest and to watch Byron and Sam and Gene tee off on the, on the first hole. Um, and it's been a, a part of my life uh, to have one here as the, my first major as, as a pro, um, hugging my dad as you saw, and then full circle in 19 to you know, hug my son. Uh, it has meant a lot to my family. Uh, it's meant a lot to me. And uh, I always want to keep playing in this. And today we got a chance to play with Fred. And Fred's been here, you know, a very long time. And uh, we're joking that, you know, he's the oldest person ever to make a, uh, oldest person ever make a cut. Uh, and I think he can do it again this year. So it's, it's great. I mean, that, that's, that's the neat thing about this golf course. And it's the only major we play on the same site the same venue each and every year. And we get to tell stories and um, catch up with friends. And um, for me, get a chance to catch up with you know, idols and the people that I've, I've looked up to my entire life. Zach Klein, please. Hey, Tiger, what would a record 24 straight cuts mean to you at this event, considering all the major accomplishments you've had in your career? Yeah, I think it's, well, it's consistency, it's longevity, and it's a understanding of how to play this golf course. Uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons why you see players that are in their 50s and 60s make cuts here, or it's, uh, players in their you know, late, late 40s have runs at winning the event. Uh, it's just not an understanding of how to play it. You know, you still have to go out and execute it, um, but there's a lot of knowledge that goes into 
um, understanding how to play it. And granted, you know, the, every tee box has been changed since the first time I played. Every green has been, been changed. Um, but the overall configuration of how they roll and how they move and the angles you take, that hasn't changed. Um, that's the that's neat, neat thing about this. I can still go into the, the mental Rolodex and bring out a few putts from the 90s that, that still move generally in that direction and uh, the effect that Race Creek has on, on certain shots and putts, and um, it, it means a lot. Jeff Shackelford. Uh, Tiger, two things. What have you seen uh, of the golf course and some of the changes since last mm -hmm. year? And is there any particular lie with the severity of some of the, the tilt to the ground here, either uphill or downhill, that's that's tricky for you with your, your ankle? Uh, let's see. Two's been lengthened a little bit. I think it's three, 313 or 311 from the plate to the bunker. Um, four's been resurfaced. Uh, it's some of the putts, they, they've widened the, the top right of it. Uh, the bottom, the, so the back left is a little bit steeper. Um, some of the putts from the bottom move a little bit differently. And six is a little bit different too with uh, the addition of a little bit more room on the top right and the elevation of the back back of the green. So the, that little chip shot we had is a little bit different now um, over the back back part of the green. And because there's more room on that, that shelf, it doesn't feel like that you're crowded with two people on top of that shelf. Uh, there's a little bit more room now. As far as my physicality on certain shots, uh, Every shot that's not on the tee box is, uh, <laughs> is, a, is a challenge. And so, yeah, one, once we start the hole, it's, it's a bit of a challenge. Doug Ferguson? You said last year your, your hope or your ambition was to try and play once a month, realize you have mm -hmm. uh, some limitations. I'm just curious, what specifically <laughs> uh, determines whether, whether you play? What kept you from, you know, since playing from Riv? Well, I wasn't ready to play. Uh, my, my body wasn't ready, my game wasn't ready, and I thought that, you know, when I was at Hero, you know, once a month was, would be a really nice rhythm. Um, hasn't worked out that way, uh, but now we have major championships every month, you know, from here through July, so um, now the once a month that hopefully kicks in. Bob Herrig. Tiger, just want to follow up on that. Was there any physical issues that kept you from preparing the way you would have wanted to in the past, you know, a month ago to play in Florida? And where are you in that regard right now? Uh, the body's just, uh, you know, the things that just flare up. Um, and as I, again, the training that we have to do at home, it, it changes from a day-to-day -day basis. Um, some days I just feel really good and other days not so much. Uh, next will be uh, Mr. Jacques Patterson. Tiger, with everything that you go through in your career right now, what makes you get up and go through all the preparation and all the, you know, the things you have to yeah. go through to get ready to play <coughs> top-level major golf? I love golf. <laughs> I do. I've, I've, I've always loved it. Um, I, I played other sports growing up, but I just have always loved this sport. And I love to compete and be able to have the love I have for the game and the love for competition be intertwined. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons why I've had a successful career. Uh, I just love doing the work. Uh, I love logging the time in and I love preparing. I love competing and I love that feeling when um, everything's on fire with a chance to win and uh, you either you do or you don't. Jimmy Roberts. Hi, Tiger. Um, you talked a bunch about your local knowledge, and it's obviously considerable after all these years. Is there any way to quantify how many strokes around that might be worth to you on an average uh, round? I, I don't know if it's, it's quantifiable, but I can tell you that understanding where to miss it is. I mean, granted, you're going to get some weird wind pop up and hit spots, but understanding of where to miss it, how to miss it, and the shot shape to put it there. Um, I, I don't know what the exact number would be, um, but it is helpful. And that's one of the reasons why it's always helpful to play with 
um, players that have had success here and players that have you know, played the test of time, especially the past champions. Kevin? Right here. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Down here. Sorry. Yep. I think last year you talked a little bit about bringing your son here and sharing memories and stuff with him. How often do you bring him here to play, and how often does he ask to come? Uh, we haven't we haven't played in a couple of years now. Um, I came up here last weekend. Uh, he uh, wanted to be at home, so I came up here and, and came up here and got a chance to play with uh, the chairman and and Rob and JT, and we had just an absolute blast. You know, I would like to obviously play a little bit more up here with him uh, and to share the experiences, you know, especially now that he's got a little bit longer. So uh, he hits it past me. So I think that uh, the, the days of playing for the members tees are over. He's got to come back there with us. <laughs> Don Riddell. Berger, when you think of everywhere you've been, everything you've achieved and the life you've had, what does the game of golf mean to you? Uh, well, it's been my life you know I've 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 I started playing in nine months so <laughs> I've, I've done it pretty much my entire life and uh, played my first tournament when I was five and uh, have been playing tournament golf and playing golf around the world not just here in the United States but around the world it's, it's allowed me to to see places that I don't think that I'd ever have gotten a chance to see uh, people uh, that I've got a chance to meet all around the world. Um, this and and the the generational connectivity with the sport, right? And so, um, as I said, with you know watching Sam and Gene um, and Byron tee off to the, the, you know two years later to watch them drinking my milkshakes um, to play practice round with Fred and Raymond and Seve, you know, over the years. I mean, th those are. And, and Jack and Arnold, you know, th those are memories that I'll have for a lifetime. And it's all because of the sport. And Hi, Tiger. Can you talk about what it means to you to mentor younger players? We know what it means to them, but how about any kind of joy that you might get doing that? I, I, I love watching them succeed. You know, the, that's, that's part of the game is we, we, we pass on the knowledge. We, we don't keep it. Um, all the, the players that have come before me, I, I really didn't really discover anything new, is the fact that they were able to share a lot of that with me. Um, and then, you know, that's what we do. We, we pass on the knowledge to the next generation. And especially here, you know, that's one of the events that we get a chance to do that just because we're playing on the same venue, you know, every, each and every year, we're able to pass that on. And I think the Masters does an incredible job of bringing together um, the past and the future uh, of the game of golf. Mr. Murray? Tiger, yep. what's your current position regarding the, the Ryder Cup captaincy? Sorry, say that again. Your current position regarding the Ryder Cup captaincy at, at Beth Page? Okay. What, what is it? Uh, we're, we're still talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> is it linked to how much you're going to play golf? No, I, it's something that Seth and I are going to sit back and, and talk about it after this event. Um, I said I'm going to be busy for a couple of weeks, so uh, let me focus on getting through this week and hopefully getting, getting another jacket, and then we can sit back and talk about it next week. Mary Kate. Hey Tiger, um, just curious over here, up here, Where am I left? over here, to the Where, right. <laughs> right. Yes, got it. Sorry. No, you're good. Can you describe the feeling you get when you return to this property and get to put on your green jacket? Um, it's special uh, to come down Magnolia Lane. The first time I, I got a chance to see it, I came in the, in the middle of the night. We, we played a Stanford Georgia Tech event. Um, so I came in the middle of the night and I didn't get a chance to see Magnolia Lane the, 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 for, for my first time, right? So um, got a chance to stay in the crow's nest and the next day got a chance to see the golf course and you know what what this amazing property is and the just uh, the, the fact that I'm able to put on a, a green jacket for the rest of my life um, is just absolutely amazing and uh, I, I'm just an honorary member but um, I love it. J.R. Barry. 
Tiger, I want to talk about Vern Lundquist. He is retiring from the Masters after this year. His iconic call in 16 years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you hear a lot about it. Could you talk about that for a moment and what Vern has meant to Augusta National? Yeah, I've heard that call a couple times. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that, I mean, he has just an amazing ability to bring in the audience and describe a situation and, and just be able to narrate it in a way that is poetic, but it's also, um, he describes it with emotional, with emotionality and he just draws the audience in. Um, and it's amazing what is I think his 40th year, maybe I think it is now 39, 40th year, um, to be able to call the masters. I mean, that's what I grew up watching. I just grew up listening uh, to Vern, and he made a nice call there at, at 16. And um, it's one that I've been lucky enough that, you know, I, I will have that memory with Vern for the rest of my life. Uh, Stephen Watson. I, I got it. And yes. I, as someone who knows what it's like to win a career grand slam or slams, mm -hmm. as Rory McIlroy tries to achieve that feat again this year. Can you explain how difficult it is to win a slam and do you think he will do it at some stage? No, no question he'll do it uh, at some point. Uh, he's just, Rory's too talented, too good. Um, and he's gonna be playing this, this event for a very long time and he'll get it done. Uh, it's just a matter of, of when. Uh, but yes, I, th I think that uh, Rory will be um, be an, a great Masters champion one day, and it could be this week. You, know, you never know. Um, I just think that uh, just, again, the, the, the talent that he has, the way he plays the game, it, it, and the way the golf course fits his eye, it's just a matter of time. Next is Mr. Vishwanathan. To you. Mm -hmm. Tiger, <coughs> sorry, uh, Tiger, you keep talking, we all know that your body's taken a lot. Is there anything about the ankle which is like still that is unknown to us? I'm sure there's a lot unknown, but something that you're trying to repair to make sure that you continue to play the game that you love and given so much to. Well, the ankle doesn't hurt anymore. It's fused, it's not going anywhere. Um, so that, that's fine. Uh, it's other parts of my body that are now have to take the brunt of it. Um, so yeah, once you put the rods in there, it's, it's good to go. Um, but you know, the, the, the back, the knee, then other parts of the body have to take the, the load of it. And just the endurance capability of, of walking a long time and being on my feet for a long time. Scott Michaud. You've talked a lot about some memories uh, uh, already today, mm -hmm. but what do you feel like you're capable of doing this week? What do you believe that you can do this week? If everything comes together, I think I can get one more. <laughs> uh, Want me to describe that any more than that? Or? <laughs> <We're good. laughs> uh, Barry? Tiger, you mentioned um, knowing all the shots here, but that means you also know the difficulty of the walk. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it's the most difficult walk there is on, on tour, and what is the impact on your body of four days of that potentially? Um, it's it's certainly one of the more uh, hillier walks that we have on on tour. Um, the you just don't realize it, and where the clubhouse is perched to the bottom of, of twelve green, uh, we're playing on a on a hillside. Um, and we're just, you know, meandering, you know, back and forth across that, that, that hillside. So, um, yeah, it is a long walk. I think it's, I think I've done just over six and a half miles here. Um, uh, but it, I, I think that it's more than anything, it's the shaping of, of shots. The, these are things that I can't simulate in Florida. We're pretty flat. So um, I try the best I can on, on certain hillsides um, back at home to kind of hit shots, but when you, you just got to come out here and do it. And then on top of that, uh, playing on, on bent uh, and the movement of these greens, uh, that is something that, because I, don't, I haven't played a whole lot on tour, I don't really get a chance to see you know, that very often. I'm home in Bermuda all the time. And so that's another, another factor into in this week. Uh, Mark Hanazaro. 
Tiger. Hey, Mark. Um, I'm just curious, you, you've spoken about obviously your reverence uh, for, for Augusta National and whatnot here, and Jack back in the day would always talk about he would resist to be a ceremonial golfer, and I just wonder for yourself, as these physical stuff is mounted and the challenges have come, where are you in that thought of, of you know, how where your kind of golfing competition mortality is, if you will, for for this place? And have you thought about being one of those starters down the line on the, on the no. Thursday morning and that kind of thing? No. <laughs> Maybe not that far, no, but just I have not, you know. I have not thought about being a starter here, no. <laughs> but, I mean, in, in, a more immediate, in a more immediate sense in yeah. terms of playing when you maybe don't think that all things can come together and you can win as you do right now. Well, Mark, I still think they can. So I don't know when that day is, when that day comes, but I still think that I can. Um, I haven't got to that point where I don't think I can't. Um, Alan, next, sir. Hey, Tiger. Curious, under ideal tournament conditions, do you think a 59 is attainable on this golf course? In if we if we played the old um, yardage and the old tee boxes, I, say, I would say yes. Um, not at seventy six hundred, um, and the ability for uh, for this golf course to get longer than it had than it, it plays. I mean, they when we played when I first played here, the the fairways were were more cut and down grain. Now they're into the grain. Um, the overseed has gotten thicker. Uh, the golf course just plays stickier in a sense. Um, I know they've sand capped all the fairways, um, but the the rollouts is not what it used to be. So you just can't sneak down there. And when I I was telling, I mean JT's heard this a bunch of times, and we we're talking about it. And I was talking to uh, uh, Mr. Chairman when we were playing. When I played here in '95, it, my my clubs here. It was raining. I had a 60 degree sandwich in a one. I had eight iron in the two. I drove in a crosswalk on five. Um, I had five iron in the eight. I drove in a crosswalk on nine. I drove in a crosswalk on 17. Uh, so there was a lot of 60 degree sandwiches. I had a pitching wedge in a 15. Uh, that doesn't exist now. Um, so I don't think that's uh, a reality anymore, just with the fact that we're so far back. Ladies and gentlemen, we have time for two more questions, and I want to address the gentleman in the back row at the end. I can't quite see. Yes, sir, in the gray. Or the Navy. There was two hands that were right up. In f yes, sir. I'll, I'll go. Tiger, can I just ask again about your physicality, the pain you're under? Is it a constant when you're out there on the course? Is it worse here? And are you playing with, playing with painkillers? Uh, I hurt every day. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. I, I, I ache. No, I, I ache every day, and um, I, I prefer it warm and humid and hot. And uh, I know we're getting some thunderstorms, so at least it'll be hot. It won't be like last year. Last question, please, Michael. Thank you, Rob. Uh, Tiger, right here, please. Um, you know, the USGA and the RNA are trying to make golf simpler. Um, I'm wondering if you'd be interested in joining a growing movement to make the OB rule. Just stroke, not stroke and distance. Just drop it where it went out. Say that again? I'm, I'm sorry, be, I don't understand. Okay. Question. You're trying to make golf simpler. Okay. And how about a rule change by which for going OB, you can just drop it where it went out instead of having to reload. Would you be in favor of such a rule change? Well, I think there's a, a number of rule changes that would have to come before that one. That would, speed, a, up, that would speed up the game, that would make it better. What's, uh, your, what's your favorite I, thing? I don't know, but I think that's there's a, I think there's a number of items that are on the list before that one. You got it. Well, Tiger, thank Thanks, you Rob. so very much. Thank Thanks you, ladies and gentlemen. And Tiger, we wish you obviously the very best of luck this year. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Yeah. Yeah.